Right, welcome to the next video in this series. Um, you'll notice I'm starting on the reflection for the step-by-step -step one. I ended that video a little bit prematurely on purpose, um, so I'd like you to do the reflection now. Um, and just tell me something new that you learned about step-by-step, -step, writing step-by-step -step instructions in the programming process, or in general, what's something you already knew but now see differently, and what more would you like to know? We will be sharing these in class at a later date. Okay, moving right along. Pseudocode. You may not have heard this term before. Um, that's okay. Pseudocode, another way to refer to this is a rough draft. So think about a rough draft in your writing class. What are your initial thoughts on that? And what comes to mind when you hear the term rough draft or pseudocode? Um, it doesn't necessarily need to pertain to programming. It's going to take about five minutes. Write these, your initial thoughts, down in your notes. And pause the video. Restart it when you're ready to go. All right, welcome back. Let's jump right into this here. All right, um, pseudocode. Pseudocode is simply a rough draft. It's just a um, your first attempt at writing code. It tells you kind of what the blocks you're going to use, what the what code are you going to use, um, what changes do you need to make to those blocks, and um, you know it doesn't need to be correct. You will be correcting this. You'll have you and your partner will be correcting this. You'll have other teams correcting this. You may have me correct this. Um, you can use paper and pencil or you can type up your initial pseudocode and then print it out. In fact, you're going to be forced to do that. Um, and um, you should have the equal numbers of step-by-step. -step. So what that means is your blocks, the number of blocks you use, should equal the number of steps in your step-by-step. -step. So these should match up pretty closely. Um, in here, the blocks you're going to be using, because you heard me use that term blocks previously, for the EV3s, you will be using, you can use all of these action blocks here, these green blocks. The ones that are X'd out are not available on the NXT. So, for example, here, sound blocks. You have a sound block, looks like a little tiny speaker. You have a display block. You have a tank block and a steering block, and then you have a large motor block. EV3 only has, or has a medium motor. Um, if you're using the NXT kit, you can't use that. Then you have these decision blocks. Oftentimes you'll hear people refer to them as flow control. Think of these as punctuation. This is doing doing things. This is controlling the flow of the program. You have a wait for block. It's just similar to a stoplight um, or a period. You can wait for the light to turn green. You wait for a comma. You take a breath when you're reading a sentence loop this is something or code you want to repeat um, you can use the wait for block is kind of like a loop but the loop is a little bit stronger even when it comes to repeating things it gives you a little bit more flexibility switch we're not going to get into but it allows you to do something do this or this based on this condition um, so moving right along what the pseudocode looks like when you're writing your pseudocode for action blocks these are the things that it needs to include. If it's a motor block, you need to have the block name, large motor block, tank block, steering block. This is so when you go to write your code, you already know what block you're using. And you may be guessing at this point. That's fine. Um, the ports you're going to use. Are you using port A, port B, port C, port D? Um, the NXT only has three motor ports, A, B, and C. The EV3 has A, B, C, and D. It has four. <coughs> Excuse me. This is important um, because it's something you can check to see if your ports, if you're using the right port. Power level. Are you wanting to go forward, a positive power level, or are you going backward, a negative power level? So the power level controls the direction that the motor turns. Not necessarily the direction the robot goes. If you've installed your motor backwards, backwards would be forward and forwards would be backwards. I know, confusing hang with me. And then you're going to be marking the duration. Is it in rotations, seconds, or degrees? Robots don't understand centimeters. They don't understand distance. They only understand rotations, turns of the motor, seconds, 1001, 1002, or degrees, 90 degrees, 80 degrees, 75 degrees, 360 degrees, 720 degrees. There is another setting on the motor block wait for braking or braking. Um, this just has to do whether do you want your robot to coast under kind of mo use momentum and then when it runs out of momentum it stops or do you want it to brake where it stops the motor and then it kind of depending on the power level you can see it jerk. Um, I usually leave it to brake so it stops automatically. 
Then you have sound and display blocks. They're pretty much the same. Um, the only real difference is with a display block, you can add in where on the display you want this kind of the coordinates using that coordinate plane that you learned about. Um, that's the only really difference between the two. So you have the block name, is it a sound block or a display block? And then the file that you're going to be using, or the tone, picture, sound, those kind of things. Okay. I'm going to switch programs here quickly. Um, I'm going to go here to the EV3, and I'm going to bring up a sound block. And you're going to notice here, one trick to know is you've got the volume level and all that. You're going to be playing for a file. You can either have it play a tone or a note. And you'll see notes. You can use the piano key. And my sound isn't turned up. That's why you're not hearing it. You can play a tone where you can choose you know, the hertz of the tone. Or the one that I use more often is file. Now, a lot of people get confused. Where do I find the sound files? Come up here to this little white area up here where it says file name. Click on that. You're going to go to Lego sound files. Project sounds are the sounds that you've already included. Okay, or that you've already attached to this. You can go to Lego Sound Files, choose the what you think is, and then click on it. And here, and hopefully you're hearing that in the recording, the sound that's there. You can also come over here to Tools and go to Sound Editor and where you can add in your own sound, record your own sounds and add those in. You can go ahead and do that if you want to. Okay. So that's sound. Next one, display block. Works the same way. Um, you can do shapes, texts, grids, all that, but you come up here to the project files to um, find where things are at. Okay, And this is based on the EV3 screen the NXT screen is a little bit smaller a little bit smaller resolution so you're going to need to play with the X and Y coordinates to get things lined up the way you want them okay let me flip back to PowerPoint here and <coughs> move right along okay next one in the slide so wait for block you're going to have the block name which is wait for the condition you're waiting for it can be duration it could be a sensor um, and then the state, like how many rotations or how many seconds. These are going to be the two most common that you use. Again, same thing for the loop. Switch we're not going to get into, but it's the block name. Are you using looping for time? Are you looping for rotations? Are you looping for a count? And what brings it out of the loop? Four counts, four trips around the loop, and we're done. Or 21 rotations, and then we move on out of the loop. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So, what you're going to do is you have step by step. Here's your um, step by step. What this looks like for waiting five seconds, move forward five centimeters, turn right 90 degrees, show a green light, and then play a cheering sound. The pseudocode would look like this: a wait for block, five seconds. Move tank block ports B and C. There's my power level. This power level goes with both of these. Okay, for 0.28 rotations move steering block. Now I'm going to do something different. I'm doing ports B and C for 50% power and turn of 50%. So I'm adjusting the power level of the motors 50% to see if I can get a 90 degree turn. Brick status light, brick, zero for green, and then a sound block playing the cheering sound. I'd like you to go ahead and try writing this program and see, does this all work out? Do you get to go forward five centimeters and turn right 90 degrees? Does this work out? And go ahead and fix it. See if you can um, adjust, make the adjustments, work with your partner to make to make your step-by-step -step and your pseudocode match. What changes do you need to make to the pseudocode? Go ahead and pause the video and work on that. Go ahead and start it back up when you're done. Or if you're doing this at home, you'll be doing this activity in class. Okay. All right, welcome back. All right, so homework from last week or the homework that you did before where you were writing a pro you wrote the step by step for waking the robot up now I want you to write the pseudocode and once you're done writing the pseudocode write the program see if you can wake your robot up write that simple program okay. go ahead and pause the program and go ahead and start the activity start it back up when you've completed alright once you've completed the program of waking your robot up and turning doing the turning and stuff I'd like you to
do a reflection in your notes. You will be sharing this with the class. Um, what is something new that you learned about pseudocode or writing rough drafts? What's something you already knew about this and you see differently? And what more would you like or need to know? Go ahead and pause the video. Take about five minutes um, to work on this. And when you're done, go ahead and start it back up again. All right.